Howdy, everybody. We are in the Washtenaw National Forest again, the Mud Creek area, place that we went last weekend that we found at the very end that Kelly said she really liked. We're right next to a creek called Little Johnny Branch. I think that's what it's called. And Kelly got these new lights. What do you think, babe? Oh, I love them. That's why I got them. Man, we're going uptown higher end on I this, guys. I just love this color of light and I hate these fluorescent lights so once these die we have this and we can actually see I feel real fancy so, y'all I feel I feel what? real fancy I like it All right, I'm starving yes so Kelly is gonna make something delicious again she's made it before but she's never talked about it and it's been over a year since she's I made it yeah I haven't made it in a long time there's something scratch but she had to prepare one thing at the house before we got here mm -hmm. and that was pickled onions yeah and what do you make with pickled onions Kelly it is water you boil water sugar red wine vinegar and I think that's it and you boil it slice the onion put it in there boil it for about three five minutes but what is it that you make with pickled onions, honey? Oh, there you ask me how I make pickled onions. Uh, so I'm making black bean burritos. So I'm going to make like a homemade um, refried beans with black beans. And quit laughing at me. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I'm really hungry and tired right now. And um, cilantro, the pickled onion, and wrap it in a burrito and fry it. First things first, I'm going to start my bean filling mixture. I'm going to heat up some oil in my pan, which my pan is not hot, but I have to do some other things first. I think I've got five cloves of garlic and I'm going to use two cans of beans. You don't have to use black beans. You can use refried, pinto, whatever you want to do. While Kelly's chopping up the garlic, I wanted to say some of you have been asking, do we camp in the cold weather? Guys, we camp all year round, except for extreme heat advisories. Mm -hmm. And if it's like extreme, extremely cold. Yeah, like when it's 13. So tomorrow, we're gonna go through and just show you how we do our winter camping. Cause you're asking, well, how do you make it comfortable? Guys, we glamp in the winter, more so than we do in the summer. If you could see our setup, it's dark in there right now, but it looks really fancy. We're also going to show you the lights, not these lights that we just bought. What we're going to show you is the Mac lights tomorrow whenever it's bright out. I don't have a link for the Mac lights. A friend of mine purchased those off the Max tool truck and gave them to us as a gift. But they're rechargeable, so we recharge them on the Jackery every single day uh, or the next day and then use them for dinner. And right when we're done washing dishes, they start going out, so the timing's perfect. My oil is hot. I'm going to add in my garlic, here's some pepper, some salt, and some cumin. I'm going to let my garlic get almost brown a little bit, and then I'm going to throw in the beans. I'm going to toss in my black beans. So if you have a potato masher, this is where that comes in handy. I'm just going to use my spoon. I've chopped up, this is a uh, three scallions, and I'm gonna put this in here. I had to turn my heat off because it was getting a little hot and burning my garlic. Now, since we've got that, I'm going to put, I have like one third cup of water. I'm gonna toss that in there with my scallion. Incorporate it all together. I'm just gonna let it cook down. The water is gonna help to break up help me mash these beans a little bit better since I don't have a potato masher and it's going to combine them all together but it looks delicious and smells delicious already. Now I'm going to get ready to assemble my burritos. The bean filling is done. So for this one I'm going to use pepper jack cheese here but you could use whatever cheese you want to use. I just really like, I got it. I just really like pepper jack cheese. Every man needs to have a pocket knife handy, ready to go, right, Kelly? It comes in very handy, for sure. You know, actually having a pocket knife is handier than pockets on her shirt. <laughs> really? 
It is. Oh, cut me off. All right, so I'm gonna do cheese first because I actually had a fan that told me cheese first melts uh, quicker, and it works. It does. <gasps> Look how pretty that is! It looks like a piece of art. Add some green. Yeah, yeah. So the oil was so hot that Cody couldn't get me flipping it because I had to cook them pretty quick. But they're done and they look good. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. The tortillas turned out great. By the way, our lights haven't gone out yet. So these lights are doing good. And once again, we'll show you those in the morning. But we will see you in the morning. See you then. Good morning. It probably got down to. I had to be in the 20s. Yeah, because I checked the uh, thermostat in the vehicle and it's not thermostat, thermometer inside the vehicle. I wish we had a thermostat out here. That'd be really nice. And uh, it was 30. So I know last night I got 20 and it's about 8.30 right now. We've been in the tent kind of trying to stay warm. Goodness gracious. How'd you, how'd you sleep? I slept good and then early, early this morning I got. My toes got cold. Just my toes. I don't know wool socks. I don't know. I don't know why. So we're going to get this fire started. And Kelly is about to cook pancakes. But she's doing something that she stole from someone else. Well, I'm putting bananas in my pancakes. Well, that's not stealing. But I attempted to make chai syrup. So we'll see how that turns out. So if you remember when we went to Dogwood Hills Guest Farm, they made us chai syrup. And that's what Kelly tried to steal. So, Ruth, Grace, we're trying to do it right now. Out in the middle of nowhere, Kelly made well, it. I already made it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I made it yesterday. <laughs> okay, I remember you making that now. So, let's see how that turns out. We have finished breakfast and I just wanted to say it is probably only 40 degrees out here but it's feeling like a spring day. Took my moo moo off, got just my thermals on and it's feeling pretty good. Just oh, finishing man, uh, some coffee. Syrup turned out great. Oh yes, yeah, so it did turn out very well. 
Um, I probably put a little bit too much brown sugar. It was sweet, too sweet. Um, but next time I know just not to put that much. And I'm going to make more syrup because that wasn't enough. But it turned out very well. And then Cody wanted to talk to you about those lights we were mentioning that we used last night. The Mac Tool lights. He's going to show you what they look like. We got these lights from a friend of mine, like I said yesterday. And Mac Tool Truck comes to his office and he just buys directly off of it. I went to their website and this light is not on their website. I apologize, everybody. If you know somebody that can go to a Mac Tool Truck that comes to their location and they can go on the truck, they might be able to find one of these lights for you. But online, they do have the same style. This is a rechargeable. You just plug in the back here with a magnet. This is a magnet that adjusts. And you have this bar LED light. Two levels, and then you have a light at the end there. So these are called bench work lights. And they, of course, this one has hooks on the back. The other light is also a bench work light. But it's rechargeable at the top and it just has this one massive led light right here this thing is bright this one always goes out first but these two lights combined light up the whole entire thing if you've ever seen trucks with the led bars across the top of their vehicles and lights up the whole area that's exactly what these do they just run out quick but we will put the link to the website and you can look through the area of lights and see if you can find something that suits your your need but i'm sorry that we can't get it for you. And I want to say that they last probably about two hours. Two and a half, give or take. Um, long enough for me to cook dinner for us to eat and clean up dishes. And then last night they were still going and we just turned them off. So. Oh, I need to recharge them. Yeah, and we need to charge them. And they're magnetic. Did you mention that? Yeah. They're magnetic check on the this end. Out right so here. That's so, cool. Yeah, magnetic. So that's why we put up the canopy, especially when it gets dark early, not necessarily because of rain. This morning I did not cook under it because of the dew was just dripping off of it. Um, but really just to, uh, you know, attach these lights to something. We could string a rope, but um, it's just really convenient. It's kind of like I'm in a kitchen. It's really nice. So we're also charging the Jackery this morning because, you know, we, we ran my ambient lights I got. Um, and the Jackery this morning uh, was at 40%. So now we've got the solar panels out and it's already pumping in power and it should be pretty much all the way charged um, by the end of the day. We've got a beautiful sunny day today. Very rare. So we're going to take advantage of that. And I think all the plans for today is we're just going to chill around camp. Uh, Jonathan is coming um, a little bit later this afternoon. And I'm going to be cooking, of course, some delicious food. And I asked Jonathan what he wanted me to cook, and he requested something. Y'all have already seen it before recently. But that's what the boy wanted, so we're going to make it. <laughs> and have a great time. Last night, promised that we would talk about what we take winter camping and how we stay cozy and comfortable mm -hmm. during the coldest times of the year. Yes, so... First things first, we'll talk about clothes. I have on thermals. These are fleece lined thermals. And last night, if you saw me in this morning, I had on actually some sweatpants that have like a sheep's wool on the inside of them. And then I had on a really warm shirt. So layering is the number one thing. Right now it feels great out here. I could take off my upper layer of clothes and I'm just hanging out here. I have on regular shoes. Earlier I had on my Uggs, which of course have wool on the inside, very warm, with socks. Um, always we carry our beanies as well, keep our heads warm. What about you, Cody? What Man, do you wear? Right now, I, I, I don't have nothing <laughs> fancy on. I actually took off everything that I had, but I had thermals up under here this morning, plus my jacket on, and I'm about to probably roll up my shorts and put on Chacos. But now I want to talk about the tent. And one of the things about the south is that we have a lot of moisture in the east and south compared to out west in the Rockies. So, oh, you got something? Uh, because of that, we have a lot of dew. Moisture gets in behind your clothes. Moisture lays on top of your tent. So that's why we keep the rain fly on. Of course, that would be cold. But we want to bring our rain fly tight during the summer. We'll pull this out here for airflow if it's going to rain or we just completely leave it off in the winter because this is only a three season tent. This isn't a winter tent. But the reason we choose not to go that route is because we might only have maybe three weeks out of the winter, maybe four weeks where it's really cold. 
Okay, Kelly's looking at me like I'm, I'm crazy. Saying, I'm saying we're looking into buying a winter tent as well because this will actually be our first winter that we're going to try to camp continuously. Because I'm not a... Exactly. So, yes, we're going to look into getting a winter tent, and that will help save on this tent. If we're alternating tents, we're not going to wear one out as quickly. Oh, yeah, that's true. But if you don't have a winter tent and you're only camping once uh, in the winter or twice, just pull your rain fly tighter so that it will prevent heat from escaping. So underneath are my comforter. We have our two sleeping bags. We have our warm blankets and fitted sheet. Underneath the fitted sheet is our uh, foam mattress toppers and then we have cots. So we just kind of scoot the cots together. So it just kind of makes one big bed here. And then we can hold each other all sweet like we can snuggle. We can snuggle, warm. but uh, we'll share this comforter so that our yeah, body it's heat. Big. It gets off our bed at home. It's a queen, so yeah. I mean, it's pretty big. But we can share that. And like we said last <laughs> night, this is glamping. This is nice. Uh, we want to be warm and cozy, and we want to continue camping. Yes. And you might think, why do you want to continue camping in this because weather? So, like this morning, waking up and today has just been all worth it. It's been such a beautiful day here. Now, if it was raining, I don't know if I would want to be here this temperature because uh, you can't, I mean, you just can't really do anything. You should be stuck in the tent or under the canopy. Because so. last weekend, that's what we ended up doing was leaving early on Sunday because it was going to rain. Yes. It was just going to be miserable. The last thing that we have, and we highly advise if you take this route, be cautious. This is a little crazy to some people, but we only use this when we get ready to go to bed mm -hmm. and when we get up in the morning just to heat up the tent. We don't let it run all night. <sighs> the Mr. Buddy portable heater. The Mr. Buddy portable heater has an O2 sensor in it. So if the oxygen levels get too low, it shuts off, but we don't have to worry about it because our tent is breathable and we make sure to shut it off before we go to bed. It also has a tip sensor. So if this thing tips over, it actually will shut off. You want to make sure, like we usually, we keep it over in the corner like this and we'll put it way back in the corner and pull everything away. It doesn't heat up this too much because the heat wants to go up. It actually doesn't heat the bottom of the tent up at all. The only thing I felt was kind of warm was the comforter, but that's it. But it actually makes it where it it's very easy to get up, put on some clothes so that we can get out of the tent because if you don't have that, it hurts. Mm -hmm. You don't you'll lay here until noon. We actually slept until about 9:30 this morning because we didn't want to even turn that on. Mm -hmm. But that is what we do different. Besides that, that's but during the day, you don't need anything normally. Mm -mm. No, it feels pretty good out here. And of course, having a fire. So once we, we kind of keep a fire going the entire time, and that helps out a lot. So. So for the rest of the day, we've still got to wait on Jonathan to get here before we can start the special meal that that boy requested. Mm -hmm. Boy, he is. <laughs> he told Kelly, I either, what'd you say earlier? I want the Dutch oven. He said Dutch oven or pressure cooker. Because so. he hasn't got to experience either no, one. No, yeah. So let's just enjoy this area and keep waiting on that boy to get here. The time has come. The fire is getting ready to prepare for the Dutch oven. It's what we're cooking in. Cody's getting it out. We're going to get ready. We are making the chicken again. This time we're doing two chickens because me and Cody demolished the one. This thing is. So we're going to double the recipe. Um, more garlic, more lemon, more butter. More everything. But that's so simple because that's all it is and the time. Um, so it's so easy. 
We're gonna get it ready. It's already seasoned last time we put oil in it. I didn't really clean it much. I got the burnt part out, but other than that, it's ready to go. So we're gonna clean the chickens, prepare it, and get it going. We just got done washing the chickens. Kelly, pour the butter. All right, watch your hands, because it might be hot. Is it hot? You, many of you don't see, but in the background, wherever I'm not recording, I'm the sous chef. <laughs> I have to do a lot of like prep with her. Somebody's got to do it. Yeah. But on this part of the sous chefing, rub the butter on the bottom. I love how it just melted that butter and it's already like trying to get frozen again. <laughs> yeah, it's how cold it is out here. I'm about ready to start getting clothes back up and out of these Yeah, tacos. once that sun sets, we're going to be in our winter clothes again. God, it's already hard. Do you see that? I feel it. <laughs> what are you talking about? Do I see it? Now I've got some lemon. I'm going to squirt all over it. This is only half, so I've got another half. One in each cavity? Yes, ma'am. Whoa. Man, that smells really good. The time? Yeah. So that is it for the chicken as of now. Last time, if you watched our Thanksgiving vlog, the garlic kind of burned because it was in there for so long. So I'm going to wait an hour before I put the garlic in. So I'm gonna let it cook for an hour, place the garlic in there, and then let it continue to cook for an hour. So now all we have to do is put this on the fire and let it go. Cody is gonna get the coals ready for this chicken. It's hot. It's really hot, I can feel it from over here. Goodness gracious. it's really hot so we're gonna let that go Hurt for an hour <laughs> he's gonna put some coals on top right here yeah. next thing is we're gonna put some coals on top of it to create an oven like atmosphere, atmosphere. oh man <laughs> you need a big shovel no I, we we need it we're gonna purchase a big shovel and tie it to the top of the H3 because we need it to clean. It's burning my face and I'm standing up. Yeah, and I'm in it. Oh. Come on, real quick. Get these big, with these big ones over here. Yes, ma'am. They're, they're closer, so. Yes, ma'am. I'm over here slaving away. Oh, it's hot. Move over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh. See that one? Put it on the other side. Yes, ma'am. We'll come back and put some more coals on it in a minute. <laughs> this is what this is what it takes, guys. You have to be able to be a firefighter. I'm not a firefighter. I'm a fire starter. <laughs> Jonathan just showed up and he has been missing out on the delicious meal. But well, we've got one going tonight. Hey, Jonathan. Hey. So he's going to take the camera. I'm going to add this garlic in that I was talking about that I was going to add after an hour. Let's see what the chicken looks like. We're doing two chickens now. So we're going to have to cook it for two hours. You guys, y'all ready to see this? Oh, look at the juice. That's perfect for the garlic. So I'm going to toss Jonathan, have you ever half seen the garlic anything? there and half the garlic there. Have you ever seen anything that beautiful boy? I haven't. It smells so good. So we're gonna give that another hour. 
I'm going to first start preparing the bread. It is a French bread with an olive tapenade. I'm gonna make the tapenade, some Monterey Jack cheese, kind of like an appetizer. I'm gonna make asparagus and risotto. So it's Thanksgiving number two, but that's just how we do it. Okay guys, first thing before anything else is the bread. I'm making like an appetizer bread. It's an olive. <sighs> couple of different olives, mayonnaise, butter, Monterey Jack cheese mixed together. We're going to put it on the French bread. We're going to bake it. I went the easy way. I have black olives already sliced up, so I'm going to open that. Whoop. I have here a whole stick of butter and it needs to be room temperature. Obviously it's cold out here, so I'm just gonna melt it. So I'm taking just some green olives here. They should have been pimento stuffed, but the grocery store did not have them. So I just had to get regular, just pitted. I'm just gonna chop them up. Butter is semi-melted. I'm gonna add some mayonnaise. All right, we're gonna add our black olives. We're gonna add these green olives I just chopped up. I am now shredding some Monterey Jack cheese. When she shreds things, uh, the whole entire table shakes. Y'all, I just found out that Kelly has taken it to the next level. Not only is she gonna be cooking dinner, she's making a daggum appetizer. Kelly, you're she's getting a little too ballsy. You're making an appetizer prior to dinner. Do you hear this, Jonathan? No. Kelly's making an appetizer. It was gonna be part of the meal and you told me it wasn't enough food. <laughs> she's making an appetizer. Like, who makes appetizers camping? Kelly? People that love food, that love to eat delicious food. So, you, literally, this isn't a joke. You're really making an appetizer. Yes! <laughs> I need to get the oven going. Do you Next know? thing you know, she's going to be making, like, calamari. Okay. Can you make calamari? Fry it. That's all you do. You can make calamari camping? You just fry it. All right, I'm ready. I ain't even used that knife yet, man. That's nice. So this is an olive cheese bread appetizer kind of thing. Never made this before. So we're gonna check it out here. Thought it would be good, it would go with it. Oopsie. that go for 30 minutes. I am starting on the risotto. The bread is almost done. I'm going to heat up a saucepan here. You, this is what I'm using. You can use whatever you got, but this is what I got. I've got some butter and olive oil. I'm gonna melt that. I'm gonna go ahead and toss in my mushrooms. I'm just gonna saute these up. If they're kind of big, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of split them up as I'm sauteing. Let's check on this bread. The timer went off for that. Hopefully she's not burnt on the bottom. Ooh, that looks like a pizza. Holy cow. Dude. Whoa, boy. That's a really pretty appetizer there, Kelly. That's delicious. <laughs> That's so good. Mm -hmm. You look like a dragon with that smoke coming out of her mouth. And guys, 
that's an appetizer. I've never in my life had an appetizer camping. I feel like I'm at a fine dining restaurant, mm -hmm. but better because I'm camping. My mushrooms are done, so I've got them on this plate here. I'm heating up more butter and more oil in this pan here. This is for the risotto. I'm gonna heat that up and chop up an onion. Once my butter and oil is melted, I'm gonna throw in some onion. Now that my onion is pretty much sauteed, I'm gonna add in my rice. I'm making risotto. So this is the, I don't even know how you pronounce it, Ar Arborean rice. Okay, I've got my rice cooking. I'm gonna put in some white wine. I have vegetable stock. This is my favorite brand. I've got about three fourths cups of Parmesan cheese here I'm trying to shred. While we are waiting on the risotto, I'm gonna start with my asparagus. I've already trimmed and cleaned my asparagus and I'm gonna place it in this pan here. Spread them out evenly. I have got some Parmesan cheese and this is gonna go in the risotto. Mushrooms, those are gonna go in there as well. I went ahead and turned the heat off and I'm just gonna go ahead and stir this all around. I'm gonna keep it covered and let it kind of cook some more. I've got some heavy cream. I've got a cup I'm gonna pour in here. In my heavy cream, I've got some Italian seasoning. Some pepper, some salt. Gotta get my oven going to 400, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that rolling. This little mixture here that I've made, I'm gonna stir it all up. And pour it all over my asparagus. All right, I'm gonna take this mozzarella. 20 minutes. Ooh, cheesy. Yum. I think we're ready to plate this. Y'all ready? Yeah. So we're gonna use old Ron Duke here. Pull this beautiful lid off and guys, we did. <laughs> I'm embarrassed to show y'all. We did let it get a little burnt. <laughs> it's kind of burning my hand. But it she'll still be good. It looks like a meteor. I know, quit laughing. <laughs> Guys, this is ridiculous. Oh no, it's good. Oh yeah, it's pretty. <laughs> Sorry, Jeff. <Jen. laughs> is it gonna taste good? Oh, it's gonna taste delicious, honey. Is that pan gonna be so fun to clean? It is gonna be a ball to clean, I can tell you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I made all these sides. I tell you what, but you know the biggest problem, it ain't. Honestly, it looks delicious. It looks delicious, but it ain't a. Uh... Honestly, it looks delicious. I love Let dry meat. Let me just meat. try it. Tell me what it tastes like. There's the wishbone right there. Mm -hmm. Is it I good? I like dry meat. Look at that. Mm -hmm. it's good. Mm -hmm. Is it really good? Mm -hmm. Asparagus, asparagus, put your plate on the end, hold it, hold it tight. There you go. What you doing there, John? I was just prying it out. Let me just help you out here. <laughs> look, we got a breast. Look, look at all this. Mm. I'll take a wing. Okay. Is that, is that a wing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Put a breast on there. <laughs> no, there's a wing. That's a wing. <laughs> That's a wing. <laughs> there's a meat. Man, look at that. Johnson, there's more plate on, being on that plate than anybody else's plate. <laughs> <laughs> Tray plate. <laughs> who's, who's, it doesn't matter. I don't know. 
What? Wait, hold on. What's all that on your plate to begin with? No, that. Yeah. Is that edible? That is edible, man. Okay. That's the bag. It's That's the best edible. part. It depends on what you want. <laughs> you can even eat the bone if you want. <laughs> <laughs> you look like on a Christmas story. I mean, a Christmas vacation. We're like, <laughs> this ain't no joke, dude. It's like a meteor. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I ain't tasting any meat yet. <laughs> Man, that skin is hard. <laughs> I can't even bother. Got a little bit dry. Oh, you gotta wash it down with some water. <laughs> Guys. The chicken was not good. No, it wasn't. It was like a giant meteor. If you ever seen Joe Dirt and he thought that he had a meteor right and it turned out to be a piece of frozen <laughs> airplane poop, that's exactly what we had tonight. Thank God I made all the extra food because I'm full. It, and that was delicious. Yeah, but it wasn't Kelly's fault, right, Jonathan? No, no, it was ours. It was ours. Because yeah. Kelly it didn't. It was all three of us. We weren't paying attention to We time. weren't paying Time just flew. Yeah. Actually, it really did. It, it was four, tw four something. We were supposed to take it out at five, and we didn't take it out till six thirty. And when we <laughs> last looked at, it's <laughs> that's a really long time. It is. But we ended up. Kelly kept cooking some other stuff, and Jonathan and us probably spent an hour and a half going and looking for firewood, which this is what our fire looks like right now. Good job, Jonathan. Thank you. Thank you. So we have a great fire and we sacrifice the quality of our chicken. But we're full, I'm full. I'm full. I'm happy. <laughs> However, we'll see you in the morning. Good morning, everybody. It is not as sunny as it was yesterday morning. It's not as cold as it was yesterday morning either, but we are about to make the best out of another beautiful day. Kelly, take it over. So today I'm gonna make bacon and eggs and then um, <clears throat> homemade scones, but this time it's gonna be orange and cranberry. <laughs>
We just got done breakfast and Jonathan wants to show us something that him and his friend Tyler built. And it's pretty awesome. So this is my version of the deck system. I built it all out of wood, uh, some metal track and skateboard bearings. It slides all the way out the full length of the bed. Um, I have two full size drawers in here. I use just a one inch metal track on the side or half inch metal track and a piece of wood behind it. And it uh, rolls nice and smooth. And then I have a little T-handle latch that uh, folds nice and flush and it locks in so it doesn't come out. And you can also lock that as well. And this one, I just have my tents, chairs, army cot, um, yoga mat, just about anything in here. And I have it sealed off so dust and dirt doesn't get in here. And uh, it's just a nice, sturdy, heavy duty drawer set. And on the top, on the platform part, I put carpet on it just to add a little bit of protection. I can put stuff on it and it's not going to slide around. And then on the sides of it, eventually I'm going to make where the whole platform goes to the end of the bed right here. And uh, for on both sides, just have a full length uh, platform. And I'm going to have flaps with a finger hole. You can just lift up, put rope, string, straps, whatever you want to put in there. Man, this is handier in box on a shirt. Jonathan, y'all did a great job. I really like what they did. I'm proud of I'm proud of you, boy. Look at you growing <laughs> up. I like it. That's my first big project, working with wood and learning how to use saws and everything. I like it. The scones were phenomenal. They actually made up for the chicken that looked like a meteorite last night. And that was all our faults. But we love this Cayman's bot. We wish that we did not have to leave. We love it here. Other than that, we're just going to leave it at this one. But if you like this vlog, make sure you give us a thumbs up, hit that notification bell, and subscribe. And we'll catch you on the other.